without exaggeration, this is, to many here in the room, the most iconic Rolex wristwatch in the world, possibly most iconic wristwatch of the 20th century. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely humbled to offer to you lot number eight. It is the one and only Paul Newman of Paul Newman. To me personally, the meaningfulness of a watch isn't just about numbers. It's the people behind it, the story. There's so many facets to a vintage watch, notably its history. I remember when mom gave dad the watch. And then I remember going to races with dad. Dad would hand me the watch and he'd say, okay, I want you to time the distance between Fitzy and me and you know, so-and-so. So it was a tool that we used for racing. I guess I have one of the most iconic watches in the world, which was given to me in about 1984 by Paul Newman. He came over one day and asked me if I knew what time it was. I said, Paul, I don't have a watch, I'm sorry. And then he took it off his wrist and says, well, if you remember to wind this, it tells pretty good time. I think we should start right away. And I have a commission bid at one million US dollars that someone left with me earlier. Who... I have a starting bid from Tiffany Toe at 10 million US dollars. Thank you, Tiffany. 10 million is offered. Ladies and gentlemen, 10.5 is next. The first time I realized that this watch was more than just a gift from Paul to me was in about the 90s and I was at a trade show and a Japanese gentleman came up to me and he looked down at my wrist and he says, Paul Newman watch, Paul Newman watch. And I said, wow, how does this guy know this is Paul Newman's watch? And that's when it occurred to me that something's going on here. This watch must have another life. I think it definitely is in a, a league of its own. It's really the watch that started it all. It's responsible for the entire vintage Rolex collecting world. To think of a watch as significant, as important in collecting, I don't think there's something that comes close. The Paul Newman Daytona is kind of a benchmark watch in, uh, in the vintage Rolex world. And I think any serious collector, like one of the first watches they buy is they say, okay, I want a Paul Newman Daytona. This is, I think, one of the singularly most important historic Rolex watches. So Paul Newman's own Paul Newman Daytona is truly unprecedented. You have, of course, the fact that it is a Paul Newman type of Daytona, which they made probably about 2,000 of the reference 6239 with this type of dial. But then you have this example, which is the one and the only one that he has ever owned and worn with that type of dial. It is the reason why the watch is called the Paul Newman Daytona. 11.5, Tiffany. 11.5, 11 million five. 12 million for Natalie's phone. 12 million, 12 million, 12 million, 12 million. 12 million five, 13 million. 14 million for Nathalie Montbaron. Nathalie's bid at 14 million. 14 million, 500,000. I think because of the movie, because of some advertisement, some pictures about the racing cars or something, we began to call the watch uh, Paul Newman and it was a great success. Everybody wanted the Paul Newman. The, the name was uh, really a bomb uh, that exploded. And since then, the price uh, began to raise uh, exponentially. Paul Newman is the man that, in my view, raised the profile of the steel Daytona. The Daytona raised the profile of the Sabariner Sea Dwellers, GMTs, Milgausses, you name it. And from there, we went into Blancpain 50 Fathoms, IWCs, Zenithel Primeros, uh, Type 20 Brigades, and suddenly the entire sports watch market started. To me, this watch is a Adam and Eve moment in wristwatch collecting, in sports watch collecting, and I believe the market recognizes it as such, and I hope that the price will reflect that importance. 15 million US dollars for the one and only Paul Newman. Selling at 15 million, Tiffany, fair warning, the Paul Newman 6239 
15 million. Last chance, Tiffany. Fifteen million one hundred thousand for Tiffany's. Fifteen million five. Selling officially at fifteen million five hundred thousand. Thank you for your patience, Natalie. It is history now. Fifteen million five hundred thousand. I hope for a perfect storm. This was beyond any of my fantasies. I'm delighted for the watch market. I'm super delighted for the Nell Newman Foundation. They can do tons of great stuff with it. I'm in a really good mood. It really surprised me how much it went for. I had no, no idea. James and I were joking that maybe it would go for that much. And, but I, I didn't expect that that would really happen. Dad was all about being generous um, and being philanthropic. And I hope that whoever buys it realizes that there's a responsibility that comes to that launch. Elle and I are both very pleased. Uh, this means a lot to her foundation. I think we're going to take that karma that we just turned into cash and play it forward. So it's going to be really exciting. This, this story really just begins for us. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. So the whole thing's just been like a fairy tale. We're all part of history now. It's cool.